one thing I wanted to add to that. Do you, do you guys have a hard time, like, especially in comics, it's tougher, I think, than like a novel and stuff, but coming up yeah. with a character's voice, like, um, so that, you know, you say you have a, say a handful of characters and they're not all sounding the same. Like it's mm -hmm. the same person. It could be like the dialogue could be any of them. How do you kind of make them stand out a little bit? I guess like do you use like voice quirks or things like that or? Uh, well, I mean, you know, when I when I use like uh, specific actors, um, I really kind of tap into the personality of those gotcha. characters. So you know, you know, a, a, a cynic will always sound like a cynic. An optimist will always sound like an optimist. Yeah. Um, and you know, you can you can add you know you know specific phrases that they might use uh, that might come that. up. Um, mm -hmm. That also helps, um, yeah. you know, certain certain cadence the way they speak. Uh, yeah. But yeah, from for me, it, it it really is just trying to use like a, a a actor and and trying to kind of like use that as a jumping off point. Yeah, that's yeah. not a bad idea. Never thought to do that, but that is that's a really good one. Nandor, George, anything to add? No, I, I same same as uh, as Tom. Like just like a catchphrase or something that they'll say from time to time to make yeah. them that character that's what that yeah, character yeah. would say you know what i mean like yeah yeah because yeah, we know people like that right we know there are certain things that people just say all the time like yeah or yeah, your friends yeah. like you said earlier yeah. like sometimes your friends have weird sayings you know right. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah i mean mm -hmm. think back to like tv show characters that are timeless yeah ones right? that when you think of them like you always know what Urkel's gonna say or do. Right. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? Like it, yeah, it yeah. makes sense. Like yeah, you know, yeah. you always can kind of expect a certain type of thing out of a character. Absolutely. Once you kind of nail that of your character, you're good. You know yeah. what I mean? It's like yeah. Joe, Joey and Friends. He's always gonna say, "How you doing?" You know what I mean? Yeah, like, right. Exactly. You know, it's just little mm -hmm. stuff like that. You know? Yeah, you know I mean? absolutely. Because you know he wants to be an actor. You know. <laughs> any situation where the opportunity would present itself, he would jump at that. You know what I mean? It's like light. That would be his foil. Life would stop when there's an acting opportunity. Okay. Right. And yeah. that enforces yeah. the character that helps yeah. give them the voice, you know, so on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. no, great stuff. Um, so Actually, one, one uh, comment that came in and then we'll move on oh, to the final. I was question. Gonna, someone's going to chime in. No, no, no. I was just like, moving oh. my hand. Oh, okay. <laughs> Uh, Benjamin Soto said, learning about four-point opposition mm -hmm. helped me to define the roles of my yeah. secondary characters and give them a unique role to play that sets them apart from the main characters. I'm not, I've never, I've yeah. never run into the four-point opposition. Do you guys know what that is? Yeah, so you put them at, you put them in four different, like, so you draw this, this grid and you okay. put them at each side of the grid and each character is opposing each character and, and that's okay. how it affects the story yeah so oh kind of interesting story. yeah okay. so this character wants what this character wants this character wants what this character wants this, and they're constantly in opposition so now you're creating mm -hmm. these almost like drama within your story because I they see. all so want you, what the other one set yeah. up how they'll react to Correct. this Correct. different character and then vice versa yeah. Yeah. oh interesting yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh amy said like uh, a bubble approach yeah harry have you, you used something? Yeah, it's a silly comment. <clears throat> go go for it. Let me, uh, yeah, let me go through these first, Harry. Yeah, um, yeah. All right. Yeah. Do any of you write using I dialect, a non-standard spelling, like if mm. a character says "villa" instead of "fellow"? Like, yeah. oh yeah, I mean, I think that helps. You know, like especially like um, with Honey Flakes, he talks like a pirate, so I'm constantly adding "yar" and things like that. <laughs> yeah. You know? yeah. And then, I, you know, let you know he's a pirate, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, I try to weave in as much uh, like Old West slang that I picked mm. up from my episodes of Gunsmoke in Sartana. Mm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, so nice. Like, yeah. Yeah, nice. People will say like the, the fun, like from, um, you know, cow to poke, you know, these dialects, these phrases, things that, you know, right. are just lost to time that you kind of have to yeah. dig up and find the context, find the right way to use them, you know? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. it never it um, helps the voice, you know, that yeah, forms yeah. the character's voice yeah. too. Tony, what were you gonna say? No, it's like every every uh genre that I that I write in, there's always several pages of of just uh catchphrases that are that are That's relevant, cool. like a western that has all the western has all these phrases, like the like I said, like it for Star Award, it's just like three pages of just 1940 slang, and then you just figure out you know where it would fit uh in, in the character's dialogue. 
that's great research, man. Like doing yeah. that shit. That's yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. It makes it yeah. it makes it so much easier though when you're writing dialogue because you can dig right into that page and say, oh shit, okay, I can use this. That's yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Right, and kind of meld it into the character. Yeah, that's great stuff. Yeah. And I think um, just uh, real quick, like I think it's important, uh, you know, to remember it's like with with these characters, you know, what 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 do comics have to offer that we can use? You know, what what's like intrinsic about comic books that we can use to like um convey character and i think a lot of that can be how the character themselves um you know how they their gestures you know how they how they walk how your artist is you know creating their stride or you know do they lean a lot you know do they do they slouch do they or are they you know kind like a of a visual. big man you know with their, their shoulders up uh you know if you look at um w one of the one of the best, you know, stories, uh, comic book stories, is All Star Superman, and one of the reasons why that story, I mean, is so great. There's so many reasons, but yeah. what, something I love about it is, you know, um, you have Superman, who, you know, is Superman. Like we know what he would do, how he would stand, you know, all that kind of stuff. And like, but when you look at the way Frank quietly draws Clark Kent in that story, he's always slouching. He's always like he 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 looks like you know he can't be superman like it's not just the glasses you know it's not just the glasses that's hiding his face or or his haircut it's how he's moving how he's you know talking and, and all of that kind of stuff and and i think um to uh keep going with that is like also you know we have something that comics have that is really unique and something that ed brubaker does a lot in his stories is uh you know the inner dialogue or the inner monologue that the character has and giving that character a voice that way you know if, yeah. if you don't feel like you have room in your story where your character wouldn't talk a lot you know maybe they're they're a thinker you know there's they're you know if they're a detective or if they're you know an analyst or whatever it's like if they're a very analytical person and they don't use their voice you know it's like what's going on up in here and that's where yeah. you can really Get the character and present the character in that way yeah yeah, yeah absolutely you, you, use creative. the medium right use the medium yes use the medium yes comics. like that yeah. that's, well, that's what makes a great creative team it's, too if the yeah. artist can deliver that visual thing about the character mm -hmm. whether it's like like you said with clark kent slumping or slouching um yeah that mm -hmm. is that yeah, yeah, tripping but, over things, you know, if, yeah, you, if right. you, it's such a, it's, it's like any, if you look back on All-Star Superman, just like look at the pages where Clark Kent is present and see how he's, you know, presenting mm -hmm. himself. It's, it's really interesting because it makes you feel like that's a different person. Like that can't be Superman. Yeah. That's awesome. That, that's what made Christopher Reeve yes, the best I was, Superman. Dude, exactly. I, I knew yeah. you were yeah. thinking that, Johnny. I was like, yo, yes, yeah, as soon as you said the slouching and shit, like, because there's that one scene where he tells where he has to come out to Lois Lane and simply just standing up straight and yes. taking off the glasses yes. in that scene, you're like, holy shit, he just transformed <laughs> with no makeup, no anything, no CGI. He re literally became from, he went from Clark Kent to becoming Superman in front of our eyes. And it was like, that's what made him, like you said, Johnny. The, to me, the best Superman. Yes. The best, the best then Superman. became a yeah. third, a third uh, version of that when he became like the evil Superman and like oh, yeah. two, Superman three. I think yes, it was. that's right. That's He's like right. in the diner, you know. Like, yeah, I've been working yeah. on. I've been <laughs> <I love> shots, <laughs> flicking the flicking the peanuts. Yeah. Right, right. Oh, yeah. The other thing I was gonna say, like, like kind of like along the same lines as superheroes, like uh, so growing up, I mean, we all watch cartoons, but like like uh, cartoons like. The Super Friends and like uh, Thundercats, and uh, even though they're the Thundercats, and even though they're the Super Friends, each one of the Super Friends or Thundercats has their own strength yeah. and weakness. You know what I mean? So yeah, personality. Well, not person, not only personality, but like uh, what their abilities. You know, like uh, Lionel was like brave. You know, and but yet he was like youthful. He, he like a little like a kid's you know mind or whatever. Tigra, you know, was brave or whatever. Ty you know, uh, Panther was like the builder. Like everyone he was had like their the elder. He was like yeah. the elder, the yeah. one that everyone, kind of takes care of everyone. Yeah, everyone had their specialty, you know. So if uh, I mean, clearly, not one of them could do it alone, but together, that they're like, you know, each, each one of them filled the hole that was missing, you know. Yeah, I, 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 I always love the collaboration of all the heroes working. When a writer can <laughs> pull off all those aspects of a right. character, is yeah. yeah. 100%. Like, 
like only only Green Lantern can fight Sinestro, you know, because they're like opposites, you know, or you yeah. know, like Superman yeah. and like uh, you know uh, Bizarro Superman, whatever. Like they, they all had their their arch yeah. enemies, and like, you know, I love that when the Legion of Doom fought the Super Friends, you know, like because each one had their counterpart, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, right. Yeah, like the good yeah, at their, their opposite. Yeah, it's right. great stuff. Yeah. Um, one quick cut. Legend tells it that deep in the woods, on the edge of a misty field, lives an old mountain woman who holds the secrets to creating an indie comic book. Hello there, traveler. I don't mind you interrupting my supper. You ain't the first and you won't be the last. Many men come wanting to know how to make an indie comic. I tell you, it ain't easy. Teach for the weak of heart. Come on over and I'll show you how to do it. First, you need to add a piece of paper. Now, the most important part, just a bit of your soul! Ah!